call the meeting to order. Um, do we have any changes to the agenda? We have no changes to the agenda. All right. So do we have a motion to adopt the agenda as provided? So moved. Motion by Therese. A second. And a second by Jason. Any for discussion or questions? All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All, right. aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, we'll move on to consent agenda. We have the approval of our March 9th meet, meeting minutes. Thank you, Bob, for sharing. Um, the approval of claims by Jerry. And we also have a couple staff updates um, under resignations. Yes, um, Amy Agnes, our receptionist out front, um, has left us. She has found a job closer to home and with different hours. Um, so um, welcome back to that later on. Diane Jacobson, an EL teacher for us. She was a 0.4 split um, Goodhue to Redmond 0.6. We have been able to build that position mid-year. Um, and I think that was on the last consent agenda. And for those of you that weren't here, that was Meyer Bettner. Um, Gwen Buckingham is currently our nurse in KW. Um, she um, is leaving us at the end of the year. And she was actually filling Sarah Dolling's long leave of absence. And Sarah has also um, moving on to another career. Right. And no new hires, no new trans transfers or reassignments. Correct. All right. So do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. We have a motion by Bob. I will second. And a second by Jerry. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. We will move on to public input. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, and Josh, you'd like to speak? Yep. Awesome. You, anywhere you'd like, if you want to, you're okay. comfortable coming over here. Um, and, sure. and we have um, just, sure, wherever you're comfortable. Just, okay, sure, so, sure. Sure. You bet. You certainly okay. can. Um, and we um, have a three minute. Okay. Um, clock. Clock fast. And Cindy will give you a little heads up before okay. you're done. So, any, oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Josh Nelson, and I am the science and lead teacher at Tower View Alternative School and the Anderson Center. Uh, I am also the Southeast Regional Director for Minnesota Association of Alternative Programs. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Tower View staff and students to ask you to consider keeping the Tower View program in place at the Anderson Center. Tarview and the Anderson Center have been partners since the program was created in 1989, and through those years, the program has grew from an, an initial graduating class of six students and two full-time teachers to around 60 students and 5.1 full-time teachers. The program has remained at this size since 2006, when I began my teaching career at Tarview. Over the years, I've come to realize that this number of staff and students is kind of the sweet spot for this type of programming in this size community. It allows us to maintain class sizes where we can offer personalized educational experiences for our students while developing quality, long-lasting relationships with students and their families. It also allows us to have great outcomes at our school um, as we graduate on average 31 students per year over the last 10 years. Uh, many of those students have come from um, each of your districts. <clears throat> um, That graduating class, 31 students over the last 10 years in this size community, is the highest percentage of graduating class for any community in Southern Minnesota. Okay. Um, our current three-year average for on-time graduation rate is 62.4%, which does sound low. However, when compared with other ALCs in Minnesota, 62.4 is the highest on-time graduation rate in the state, um, as ALCs often enroll students who are significantly behind in credits. There have been many budget crunches through the years, and Tarview has often been looked at for reductions or even closure. The reason we have survived is because there is really not a whole lot of money to be saved in closing Tarview. When we have 60 ADM, Tarview is financially sustainable, which is almost unheard of for a core day program serving at-risk students. Yeah, one minute. The reason we are able to do this is because we have an incredibly experienced staff that take on multiple roles within the school, and we have a great deal at the Anderson Center with an annual lease of $43,000, which is extended through 2028. We are here tonight to offer alternative, alternative solutions for your alternative programming. We under, this, understand the desire for right sizing in our ALC programming costs to save districts money. And we would like you to consider that in 2020, Tarview costs were around $7,500 per student. 
while other GCD or day ALC programming costs were between $25,000 to $30,000 per student. Tower View could combine with Pathways High School program and increase its enrollment to around 70 students and create staff inefficiencies between the two programs. The Anderson Center has offered to build new classrooms to, to provide more space without increasing the lease if GCED was to commit to having a program at the Anderson Center. There are some building upgrades that could be done and the Anderson Center is committed to working with the district on those projects to make Tower View a safe space for students and staff by the 2023-24 school year. The 8-9 Pathways students would follow school or could follow the school within a school model at Red Wing High School as recommended by the state for younger ALC students. Please consider the cost saving opportunities of this option compared to moving all of Tower View students to another location next year that is yet to be determined or building a new space at River Bluff Education Center. Red Wing School District has a contract with the Anderson Center through 2028 that they will be paying whether there are students there or not. The Tower View plan would allow great ALC programming to remain in place and be the least dis disruptive option for students. This is Tower View's 33rd year, 33rd year serving the Red Wing and surrounding communities. We learned about this plan to move the program um, last Friday. We would love the opportunity to give you more details about our program if you're willing to put us on the agenda for a future meeting. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you, yep. Josh. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, and I forgot to note that the meeting date for um, our recording. So today is Thursday, um, March 23rd, 2023. And this is the Red Wing um, Goody County Ed District monthly board meeting. Sorry about that. All right. Thanks again, Josh. Yep, Appreciate it. All right. So we'll move on to reports and communications. So Jackie, you are you are up. All right. Do you want to blow that up a little bit, Cindy? Yeah. yeah. Move, move the video. All right. These are financials as of February twenty eighth. <laughs> We had received $9,409,642 or 52.1% uh, of our revised budget compared to 50.64 and 77.21. Um, that last year is always going to be higher because of the sale, uh, the refunding on our certificates of participation. Uh, you can see the $13 million there sitting uh, in uh, year end. June 30th of 21. Scroll down a little bit. We've expended $9,426,399 or 51.78% of our revised budget compared to 48.99 and 28.27. Again, that last year is skewed um, because of the out of the re uh, refunding our certificate of participation to get a part interest rate. And for those of you that are new on the board, um, we have certificates for this building. And when interest rates were very low, we resold those to save the district's money. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you see that skew. And yeah. so one more year, that will be off. Otherwise, those three numbers, when you compare the years, should be not tracking close. very closely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we sold the new bond and then we had to pay off the old one, so it's an in, in and Are there any questions on the budget? Why don't you pull up cash flow there, Cindy? We are starting to get funds in for the first semester of Five Rivers Online. Roll that up. Uh, not everyone has paid this bill has only been out a month, but they are starting to trickle in. You can see that has improved our cash flow um, <laughs> through We're a little tight in early April, gets better in May, but then June kind of falls off again. Uh, we, we will work to get those bills in. It should level this off. There's also a payment from the state. We are due that is not included in our state aid estimates right now for our part-time kids. So those, that'll come in and uh, increase our state aid payments for the rest of the year. We also, and you'll maybe hear us talk about this more in May when we do our budget. Um, the talk in Washington is that we're going to see a 22% decrease in federal funds. 
So we have to start thinking about that and planning for that. And that's across Title I, Title II, Perkins, and IDEA. So we're gonna do some work on what that looks like for us just to be prepared in case that does happen. The amount depends on if they include um, defense spending in that or not. If they don't, it's a greater amount if the 22% comes out of less. Um, so I'll keep you informed on that and keep watching that as well. The other documents in my report are for your information. Does anyone have any questions? All right, thank you, Jackie. All right, we will move on to countrywide special, countywide special services staffing for 23-24. And this is just an informational only item tonight. Yes. You have to make that quite a bit bigger. So these are the staff that um, are in the districts. And this is the staffing that I've worked out with each superintendent um, for their district. And it's broken up into groups. If you see green, it means that there's a slight increase. So in the area of speech, for instance, Cannon Falls is moving from 1.5 um, to 2.0. For us, that's an increase of 0.5 and one because they still have one speech clinician that's on a member district contract that will pick up um, at the time that she retires. In Red Wing, there was a retirement. So you see it bump up here by six, from 6.4 to 7.4. It's not an increase of overall speech staffing in that district. Um, and then if you just, I'll just kind of hit the highlights. There's no changes in sites or interventions. The next uh, change you'll see is we've had an increase of students um, in the disability area of deaf, hard of hearing. And so we're going to be increasing our deaf, hard of hearing teaching staff from 1.6 to two. So again, just a minor change. Continuing down, um, Goodhue has requested a second social worker. Um, they're going to weave that into their ADSYS funding, and um, I'm sure that they'll talk more about that. Um, so we do have that posted. So for a total change of 3.1 across all of the districts in special services staff. And I'd just like to share that with you so that you are aware of that and those positions. Um, but they're not positions that... Um, the, the member district boards are the boards that would approve the staffing in their district. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, reading center update. No. Uh, Cindy. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Jess Whitcomb. I am the Director of Equity and Instructional Services. Uh, in the fall, I came and updated, along with Weston Johnson, our Early Reading Intervention Coordinator for the district, about our Reading Center pilot, and then um, this is in Kenyon Wanamingo, and it is our Reading Center pilot in order to, if it if it works, in order to scale it up. And so really the only thing I'm here to tonight is to give you an update. So you have the whole presentation that we went through in the fall, um, but then the slide that I wanna come to, that you pulling up, so if you highlight the whole thing and then just put it in. Yeah, and that's what they did, and it came up with that. Okay, try it one <laughs> Well, it is on the... 10th page, I think. So if you flip the slide that I want to show you, the page real. Right there. So the one that says KW Foundational Reading. Can you share it with me quickly and then you can just at least put that slide up? Yeah. So if you take a look at that, it is that is the updated graph from the change between spring and winter data. Um, Kenny Wanamingo went from the lowest performing district to the highest performing district in 
out of the six. Actually, just Yep. So we're gonna talk about two of the sheets, and and I can come back and talk about the others. Um, to recap, in the in the spring, we'll give you the spring data as well, and there I can go into a little more detail if people have questions about what that is. Um, Mm. No, that Cindy has forwarded Weston's. Um, so if you look, you can kind of see the trend line. Hopefully I'll have it up here in a second. I can point to it. Um, but the green line is Kenyon Wanamingo. You can kind of see their trend. They've always been under the GCED <laughs> trend. Uh, we started and did about three weeks in the fall, and that went up to about 22% better than they had ever been. And now we're 33% better than um, Kenyon Wanamingo has ever been. If you look at that next sheet, If you look at the next page that I'm pointing to up here, um, <laughs> it, it, uh, there's two control groups that you see. The bottom two rows are, <laughs> um, so the bottom two rows are your before COVID and after COVID. So it's 2018 and 2021 of the kindergarten groups. What you can see is there are three kind of pyramids there. There are about 45% um, at the top of that red pyramid, meaning there used to be about 45% of the kids at high, high risk. The top pyramid is after Weston's curriculum. After this reading curriculum, there was about 9% of high risk, which is, I've never seen this. So I, Weston wouldn't they like know. me to- Yeah, they've gone from- the bottom to actually the top of the number district seems there. No. And if you look at the next, the middle, um, those bottom two are our controls. They used to be, if you look at national peers, at, sitting at about 34 at the median. Now we're sitting at 67, 68, um, meaning like compared to your national peers. So that's the 50% or above the national average at 68 in Kenya and Mango. Um, I think the biggest one, we as educators and parents um, and community members always want to see that growth. So those last two, those last bar graphs, you can kind of see it used to have not very much growth. Um, that top one, you can see almost all kids had growth high, either very strong or very high growth um, in, from their fall to winter. So at Weston would like me to say we're not done yet. He would, um, even though I'm very impressed with it and I want to move it to all districts right now, he said he's not satisfied until, until we're at about 80 or 90 percent, um, which I have not seen a curriculum do that. Uh, his is an intervention. It takes about 15 minutes. It doesn't do your whole literacy curriculum, but it's these foundational reading skills that we're really filling those gaps with, not just from COVID, but kind of forever. The biggest, uh, the, the last slide I want to talk about is the incremental rehearsal, which has like the four percentages. You have it up right here. So this one that you see, um, in re what research will tell you is practicing these foundational skills, you can kind of see it's about one to four times for gifted kids. You have to show it to them about one to four times they got it. Normal is about four to 14. Um, now I have to remember them. 14 to 40 um, is like you're struggling a little bit. Uh, 40 to about 200. That's how many times you have to say this letter sound or letter name for a kid who is in special education. Weston's curriculum practices it 198 times, which is why we are seeing the progress. So that to me is a big, ticket that I took me a little bit to get there with him. It's not a flashy curriculum. It's um, basically a printed out lessons front and back each day. It's working. So I'm just here to get excited, uh, tell you guys that this is where we're at. We'd like to be at 80 or 90% before we move it into other just districts, but 
we showed it to principals, we updated superintendents, and they're all kind of like, what's next for us? When can we when can we do this? So we want to wait till spring, but we are planning with other districts based on what their data looks like. How will you roll it out to other districts? All of the rest of us at once or? Uh, what we're asking is that we stay in kindergarten and we slow roll it up. So next year, if we're sitting at 80%, we would do kindergarten and first grade in Kenny Wanamingo. Where we're talking to other districts right now is, would you like to start with your kindergarten next year? Um, there are some districts that said they would like to start it in their special education um, and are not necessarily jumping on board yet. Um, so there are some districts uh, that are ready to go for next year. I'm trying to look. Uh, Goodhue is interested in starting next year. Lake City is interested. And they just have questions on where to put it. And then part of that other, what the other resource you have in front of you is getting to parents um, before kindergarten. So all of these, we got a grant um, to go out to your kindergarten students at Kindergarten Roundup if, you, uh, if your district is hopping onto the pilot. Because part of it is to connect with parents and say, we would love for letter names um, to be done before you walk into kindergarten. This is just a resource to help do that and connect with parents and kind of let them know what this is. You guys are welcome to take this. Please talk about it at your own board meetings um, and just let people know what's happening. So is this meant to be a reading curriculum or is this an intervention? Reading intervention. Okay. Because of the rates of reading we're seeing right. in the districts. Okay. We're doing it in tier one right. across the board. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> we introduced the reading, our reading center to board members last fall, but if you were new to us, yeah. um, it's on our website and you can, uh, so if you want, you won't, go ahead, Jessica. Sorry. I just don't want her to put that out. Can you get back into it again so you can, they can see what pops up? Okay. So that's what I put for. Yep. Thank so you. if you go to the reading Go back to center, the home page so that they can there see. There you go. So if it's right on the front page of uh, GCED, then it'll drop down as resources. Okay. Um, but this is for, because our Kenny and Wanamingo teachers are implementing, this would be where parents would go to have uh, there's like three parents that have reached out. One is participating with home lessons with coaching through Weston Johnson. So he's coaching because the parents that I want to double, I want to triple dip. I feel like I my kid is needing a little more help even with these with this tier one instruction, even with this in the school. I would also like to do more at home. So we have videos that parents can follow along with at home too. Mm -hmm. So those are for you. Thank you. Uh, questions? And I'll be back in the spring. Hopefully we'll have yeah, better thank results. You. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exciting. All right. So we'll move on to old business. Um, our first item is recording of board meet meetings. The board had asked that we just put this back on after a few months just yeah. to see where everyone was. I did in your packet. Um, someone said, well, is anyone looking at it? I was actually shocked. There are people looking at it. Um, so our March board, March 9th board meeting, there were five people. Um, our January 27th, 23. December 7th was 11 people. And November 3rd, 36. So just for your information. Okay. So we had asked you to... Um, come back with some information mm -hmm. with us about the legal requirements. If we do post this, how long we keep the, keep um, it available, so, things like that. So if you so we have talk. to maintain the recording, um, just like we, rec we maintain board minutes. Okay, so not only is it out on YouTube, but we have to maintain a copy of that. Um, we also are responsible for, well, let's say um, we had a public, public speaker tonight. Let's say a public speaker came up and started talking about Cindy and how horrible she is and blah, blah, blah. Um, Cindy could actually turn around and make a claim against us. So we're at risk if someone does that, or maybe a, just any one of us make a slip and talk about something HIPAA related or, so that's, that's a risk there. I think we're pretty careful. I don't, you know, um, uh, it is part of the official record. Um, so if you are in 
any kind of litigation, it is likely that instead of the minutes, they'll pull the actual recording to get the full dialogue. Um, and we maintain ownership. Um, and then we should have actually some a policy out there for things like, um, the, let's say the owl just fails right now. Well, we, we don't have, we can't fix that in the moment. And so some kind of malfunction or omissions clause that we're gonna do this to the best of our ability type. Of thing. So some districts already have something like that. I could certainly pull that together mm -hmm. for the board if that's something you want. Um, but I just, I am just returning the information you had asked. So how long do we have to keep that and make it available? Is there a requirement for that? I was told for as long as the board minutes are kept, which is forever. forever. <laughs> okay. um, and just for, for your reference, we don't, these aren't published live. We just post right. them sometime yeah. early yeah. next week. Either by, it's by Monday. By Monday, yeah. Um, so I guess we just wanted to talk a little bit about, we sort of did this sort of um, reactionary um, last year. And I'm um, just really not sure that we just want to see if the board is in favor of continuing to do this, knowing these additional pieces. If there's there's value in um, in providing these, or if if our open board meetings are adequate. How oh, many uh, like runway um, streams that live mm -hmm. and records them and posts them on our YouTube channel? the next day. So as a board member at Red Wing, I don't really find that to be intimidating. And we do have a statement that is read before public comment that you cannot use names or, you know, that kind of information. I think it would be nice to have them recorded. So if there's something as a board member, I feel like I cannot adequately explain to my fellow board members or that, you know, you don't write down everything in the minutes. And so I think to have that as a reference point for me to say, hey, everybody go back and watch this board meeting from March 23rd, because I think the information presented is relevant to our process. So I think it's a great idea to have them recorded and online and, you know, People want transparency mm -hmm. and they can't always come here to go to the meeting, especially, you know, Red Wing, it's not a big deal, but for some of your other, the other member districts, it might not be so easy. So I would be in favor of having them recorded. Well, they are recorded. Oh, and, but I mean published. Yeah. So people and have they, access. And they, okay. They're on our website. And they are now. Yeah. They are now. Yeah. Yep. So you're basically I think saying you like to continue it. Gotcha. Okay. What uh, might I ask? What were you ever using them for a live link up to let people come and join? No. Then what was the mo I, I like the background. What was the motivation to start recording it then? Um, one of the board members requested that we do that, and that we do what we're doing today, publish it, so people could listen later. Okay. Just a during second. COVID, we. Uh, we said anyone that wants to join, just let us know and we'll have the link for you. So, I mean, they were open during COVID. No one joined us. <laughs> we we started it during COVID. We still have it. And we've kept our live link up where you can join. And people are still using it. So, yeah, I'm very comfortable with it and used to doing it. I was just a little confused about why. I mean, yes, that's great to go back and have to look at it if you need to explain it or show it or whatever you want to do. Um, do you keep them then and have them available for viewing later? Yeah, they're available. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you do both live and provide it. Yeah, we do both. Okay. And I, I think Red Wings are linked through Board Book. No, or YouTube. 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 We have okay. Well, okay, we don't use Board Book. Yeah. Bob, do you have anything you want to share? Just that I fully support recording now and forever. I think it's the I think it's the right thing to do to reference alone. Okay. Um, Needs of road. We're working on it. We haven't gotten that far yet. 
we're <laughs> we're test piloting this all right now. So, but we have our Zoom link open at every one of our meetings, so people can join through Zoom so they want to watch it at night at the meeting they can. But we're working on recording them live. So, but yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. Um, I I have no I'm not against it. Um. The only thing from a liability standpoint, as long as we have policies and things in place, which that's probably something that we've not discussed in the past, so we can learn from that, obviously. I pulled some samples so I could bring yeah. that for a first reading. We, yeah. During COVID, yes, we had, you know, obviously we had to have allow people access, but um, since then we just do the, the normal board meetings and record it. Um, Correct. Yeah, that's what we do as well. So, okay, sounds good. Well, no action then. I think the the re yeah. recommendation. Oh, okay. action. Okay, yeah. so we'll just, um, I guess if someone makes, make, makes a motion to leave it as is and direct Sherry to come back with a policy to support what we're doing. I will move that. Okay, we have a motion by Bob and a second by Marilyn. Any other discussion or questions? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thanks for that, Jerry. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're going to move on to second reading of the policy 534 for unpaid meal charges. So this is our second reading. So we have um, we'll entertain a motion to approve. And I'm sure, following the governor's motion a few weeks ago, oh. MSBA will be coming out with a new one in a month or so. But for now, we should get this updated. And we need this for the rest of the school year. Yeah. It's right there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, oh, did well, you? Have isn't questions? it this? No, it's the same thing. Yeah. We've probably all passed. And yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the, same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I added one piece because I said in the event that the that we get free meals for all kids. I kind of tried to be preemptive right. and get ahead. So that little clause is in there. So we're covered. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Do we have a motion to approve? On a second reading? Mm -hmm. We don't come back for a third reading? No. 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 Oh, there's no. Good. It's great. Yeah. We always come back for a third reading. Oh, okay. Yeah. We do too. Okay. All right. We'll, um, so do we have a motion to do? No. No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion. We have a motion by I will second. We have a second by Jerry. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. So now the um, big item on the agenda for tonight is the program and facility planning um, that Josh um, came in to speak about. And um, I, do you want to give an update on our conversation or do you yes. want to start and talk a little bit? Or? Why, don't, why don't you give an update just on our conversation? Okay. Sherry and I meet and talk with um, about the items that are going to be on the agenda. And um, this is a huge issue with many moving parts. Um, very complicated, extremely complicated, and um, not something that I think we could have. Sherry brought it here with as an action item basically for us to get an update, to, to start to understand the situation that um, we're working through and to give her some direction. That was the purpose for the action item. So As for instance, to what you might move to, Sherry, I want you to set up a workshop for us right. first week of April or something so that we can dig in and look at this. Or Sherry, we want you to bring this information back to us. That's the, that's the kind of action that I thought you might need. And so that's why it's necessary. So in talking about this, um, I thought we should, it would probably be a good idea if Sherry started big picture, gave us enough information tonight that we understand the situation, we can know enough to talk with our superintendents about this, and then we're going to schedule, the thought is to schedule a workshop where we can bring in the board, our superintendents, and other parties, and discuss all of the intricate details of this. So we're all on the same page as we try to move forward. Okay. With, so, but don't hesitate to ask questions if you want to go in deeper, but it's sort of I'm gonna go over saying this. Yeah, yeah. No, so when Absolutely. you say bring in the board, you're not just talking about us no. or you're talking this about board, I am this board. board. This okay. board and our superintendents. Okay. At a minimum from the board level. Right. Yes. Um, 
So, but feel free to ask questions, to, um, whatever level of detail you want to ask. Um, but what we're thinking of is more high level tonight to get an, a good understanding. Um, so one thing I'll do is, Cindy, I will have you pull up the bottom document on here. And I'm going to have you go to the third to last slide. So this document has a lot of information in it, our revenues, our staffing, demographics of our cities, all of that. Oh, I like, oh, that, you know the one with the squiggly lines? Because I think that's kind of how I feel. <laughs> no, no, no. The real messy school designs. You'll know when you see it. That one. Okay. That's kind of how the I sheet. feel right now. Okay. So where did the conversations begin? That's part of what I want to talk to you about tonight. So you understand where this we started here. It's getting very complicated and we will figure out something going on. So um, a number of things happened. Um, the superintendents last fall asked that we look at revising our formulas that we use to calculate the ADM rate for alternative education programs. We have two high school ALCs in our county and we have one middle level ALC. And then we as a board also have targeted services in each district and credit recovery in each district. So they wanted us to take a look at all of the costing of those programs to see if there was um, a more equitable way to cost it across the districts, but also to see if we could lower costs. The first thing we did was we reached out to a number of other entities like us to find how they cost this out. As many entities that are out there, there's probably that many ways they do it. Um, and so there is no one way to do it. And um, I'll get more deeply into that conversation maybe in our workshop on where the superintendents want us to go with that because they, they've examined some and now they have a recommendation for how they would like that costing going forward. So that conversation is happening. The second line there is the impact program collaboration discussions. So up until 2008, um, GCED was a day treat, our setting four program for our special education students was a day treatment program. And in 2008, the state of Minnesota made it very, very difficult for districts to continue to fill out the CTSS application uh, for CTSS. I don't remember. I only remember Therapy the services. Yeah, it, it has to do with mental DHS, health services. Mental health services, I'm sorry. Um, it, that um, work is done under the Department of Health and Human Services at the state level. So every school district dropped their day treatments, except I believe there's three still going in the state because it's so complicated to get through the paperwork. At that point, we stopped the day treatment. We tried to continue as much as a, of it as we could. This past summer, Fernbrook Family Services decided to start a day treatment up. So there's a day treatment running in Red Wing out near Merchants Bank, and it's for the kids in all of Goodhue County. They're running into a few. So first of all, any day treatment has to have an educational component. They don't right now. So they reached out to me to say, what can we do? They're also struggling with transportation. It would be easier for them if they could transport, this. You, your districts are already transporting here because right now they're really struggling to get kids in and back home. The program is a half day program. So students are either there in the morning <laughs> or the afternoon and then they're back in their high school or in this building or wherever they go to school for the other half of the day. Without the educational component, those high schoolers cannot get any credit for that half day. Many of these students are behind in credit. And so that makes it very, very difficult. If we were had a way to bring some staffing together, um, we could have one of our um, counselors or our social workers or our FIA teacher for a health credit. We could get some credit even at the elective level in for those students. It would be a help for them. And there was one more piece to it. Oh, we have been trying. So we, uh, GCD, joined with Fernborough Family Services um, to get school linked mental health in all of our districts. So we have been ramping up school linked mental health. Cobble starts next fall. Even Trace, can you believe it? We're finally getting to our our minis. Um, there are very limited mental health service providers out there. 
kind of like teaching. There's just not a lot of them. And so they're having a staff, a full staff of therapists in the day treatment. And we have a staff here. By bringing that together, can we then get someone else out to do schooling to mental health? So we're trying to kind of feed all of that together. Those conversations started in September and they've been continuing. We are going to start um, collaborating on the transportation now in March um, when they start their programming back up in about a week. So we're trying to solve parts of it, but long-term, if we could bring that together and house it here, it would be a benefit both to our member districts in um, service from staff as well as transportation and to the kids because they need some credit. Okay, so there was that conversation. Yes, Teresa. So then you're saying that that Fernbrook program, that day treatment program that's at Merchants right now, would move into this yeah, building? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, in the fall, we also were doing a lot of work with um, the City of Red Wing, their Police Department, and Goodhue County Sheriff's Department. And we redid our entire crisis manual. When I say we... Red Wing Public Schools and GCD did that together. There's a number of reasons why we do it together. One, their um, buildings and grounds covers this site. I mean, it, there's all this, all their technology covers this site. And when you have a police department, if they respond to two different districts with different plans, it just makes it more complicated. So we partnered on that and we wrote the plan together. And there were certain pieces like cameras, um, we upgraded all the fob systems in the buildings um, across the district. The program at the Anderson Center does not have any of those security features right now. It is, and we would like them to have the same level of security that our other programs have. Okay, um, I'll kind of get to decision making on that in a little bit. Um, there was also a recent health and safety. Um, audit that was done. I just put that there. It's not like the biggest piece of the puzzle, but it's another thing that has entered in. Okay, so why don't you flip to the third to last slide now? And the t-shirt. Oh, one. Oh, one more. Oh, right there. So I just talked about the impact program and in your slides, you'll see kind of that 1990 to 2008, we had a day treatment, September 22, Fernbrook started there, September through March, we've had multiple meetings and now we're looking ahead to see how we can further collaborate. So impact is the, the day treatment. Day treatment. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, there's, there's going to be a lot right. of information. That's why I gave you hard copies of it because you're gonna need to go back and absorb some of this because it, it's just gotten pretty complex. All right, Cindy, next slide. Um, so back to the superintendents. In reviewing models, um, one of the asks was to reduce the costs. By combining the two staffs, by combining the two programs, and when I say combine, I do not mean we're throwing one out and we're keeping the other. It would really be a merging of the two. So the Tower View program is a 10th through 12th grade program. Students in that program use a self-paced model that would continue. And that's, they're not gonna suddenly become seat-based students. We understand they're older, they need some freedom, and they have a lot of things that are going on in their lives. Some of them have jobs after school, Etc. The Pathways 812 program is a seat based program. Okay? We designed that that way specifically because the other program was self paced. And we know some models are good for some students and some models are good for the other student. So we would keep that, possibly look at 8 9 being seat based and all of 10 12 being um, more self paced. That's yes, that something we looked at. So when you say seat based, you mean they come in the morning on the bus, right? And they go through the courses, them, but the classes them. are smaller size, right. that kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So by combining the staff, we can save about a quarter of a million dollars year over year. Um. Doesn't mean we should do it. It is what I've presented to um, the superintendents as you'd have to combine in order to realize that. If I, like Josh said, if we just suddenly pull a teacher out, 
there's going to be an impact because they can't have as many students at that site and offer the same courses. Um, I'll back up one more second, one more piece. Uh, GCD became the umbrella for state approved um, alternative programming in 2014. So prior to 2014, Tower View ALC was out at the Anderson Center. And in 2012 or so, they had a middle level ALC at Twin Bluff. Red Wing also then could do targeted services and credit recovery. Targeted services, it's a lot. Targeted services is K-8 programming for students that are struggling. And then credit recovery is those students behind or first time credit for some of our populations. So um, can you say that targeted? Targeted is services K8? is K-8. And, what was and credit time? recovery then is like, just like it sounds like you're at high school and you need to rec recover some credit. Okay. You cannot run credit recovery or targeted services unless you have a middle level ALC and a high school ALC. In 12-13, Red Wing came to me and said, we don't want to run the middle-level ALC anymore. We're done. We don't want to do it. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. We have a lot of kids, K-8, that need intervention. We cannot not have targeted services. And they said, would you consider becoming the umbrella? At the same time, Zimbroda Mazeppa had a um, ALP running, and it was not going well. And so they at the same conversation said, yeah, we'd really like our ALP cleaned up and Ken Falls was running. So it was just kind of a mess. Also, the other five districts could not have targeted services or credit recovery because only Red Wing could have those because they had the ALC. By putting the ALC, so the superintendents and the boards voted to put the ALC under my, under this umbrella, GCD umbrella, and so then all of the districts, as long as we continue to run the ALC, the middle level ALC and a high school ALC can have targeted services and credit recovery. One last thing about the Pathways 812 high school ALC. Tower View has always been a 10-12 program. Even when Red Wing ran the middle level ALC, it was 6-7. So we dropped kids off the cliff at the end of seven and there were no options for them in eight and nine. So when we developed pathways, we purposely said, no, this high school program has to be eight because we know some kids need that. And going back just into their regular high school for eight or nine and then becoming credit deficient, it, we had a gap and we had to fill that. So that's why that program was developed um, to kind of meet that need as well. Okay, so I kind of, that was a lot. All right, so GCD, we have to decide um, and what we're going to do as far as running that program budget wise, staffing wise, you're not going to decide that tonight because it's uh, just barely skimmed the surface. Um, and then um, the second piece of this is currently the Tower View teachers are on a Red Wing School District contract. Mm -hmm. And so I purchased those contracts. GCD purchased those contracts from Red Wing. We also purchased a contract, two contracts from ZM. This is not unusual. This, um, we do this, okay? And, you know, and districts purchase contracts from us. That, that's all normal. In the Red Wing teacher contract, there is an April 1st deadline by which I have to let Red Wing know who we're sharing. So now I'm kind of like, I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. So I, and April 1st is like, yesterday <laughs> you know so and we didn't our march board meeting i couldn't present this because i, I didn't have all of you here and, and that's okay we're gonna we're gonna be fine so i have to meet that deadline at this point i put in the staff at that quarter million cut that doesn't say anything about where the program will be all that says is i've reserved at least that many staff I believe the Red Wing School District will work with me if we need to change that. They've never not worked with me, but I wanna follow contract. The other piece about that April 1st deadline is all districts, well, I can't say all, majority of districts tell staff that are going to be non-renewed or put on ULA kind of that first week of April. If Red Wing doesn't have information from me, they can't follow through on that requirement. 
And if we don't know what staff we have, we can't give our boards a proposed budget in May. So there's all of these deadlines that are kind of like, and so all of this is kind of a moving, lots of pieces, a little bit complex. Your 15 minute board meeting the other day, much easier. <laughs> okay, can you go to the next slide? So here's the other complicating factor. In here. The Anderson Center. So a million years ago, the Red Wing Public School District owned that property. Mm -hmm. And at some point, they sold it. Right? In selling it, they there was kind of this mutual understanding that there was going to be an educational program at that site. Okay? And Red Wing has continued to lease from the Anderson Center for the Tower View program all of these years. We've never moved that lease over, which has been a benefit to some of the members because you haven't had to lease levy for it. Red Wing has just leased levy for that entire piece because Red Wing has not wanted to change the contract that we've offered to move it, but Red Wing, it's, it's been a long-term commitment. So they wanted to leave it there and they've been paying it. Um, so the Red Wing school board has to decide what they're doing. So they're going to do two things. They're going to tell me, yes, a program could be held there. Okay. If they tell me that, this board is still going to have to say, yes, we want the program there, or no, we don't. Okay, so there's there's a lot of like things have to happen kind of. On this roadmap, I put um uh, the the lease there, it's about 43,000 a year. The current lease ends in on June 30th of 2028. The Anderson Center has a plan to build new classroom space for the Tower View program. The current classrooms they're in probably haven't been updated in many decades. Okay, it, they, okay, they just haven't. Anderson Center has recognized that and they are planning to fundraise and build new area out there for the Tower View program. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that timeline would be, but before they're willing to move forward on that, they want the Red Wing School Board to sign a lease that goes beyond 2028. So maybe something like 2038. So if the Red Wing School Board says, yep, we're willing to sign a lease into whatever that date is, Anderson Center will then say, yes, we're gonna fundraise and we're going to get this done. Mm -hmm. Then they also have to make a decision about, in the meantime, can they bring security up to a level where we can say that there's, we're providing what we need to. And the environmental piece, I you know, they were planning to do the floors anyway, the Anderson Center, not in front of yeah. um, So I, I think they could they're do that. Because they're the landlords. The landlord has to fix it. Yes, yes. The HVAC problems are a little bit larger. Um, the security pieces that we're talking about, um, uh, the interim superintendent, Frank Norton, told me today it's about 220 to do the security pieces out there. 220,000. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the cost of the HVAC piece is because someone has to actually get up there and find out what's exactly wrong and why vents aren't open and things like that. So, and that's really not my area, sorry. <laughs> um, so there's there's some pieces that we need the Red Wing School Board to make a decision before we can move forward. There's some pieces that we're gonna have to, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. All right, any questions on any of that? Did I? Okay, I will say the staff that are at Tower View and, and the staff here at Pathways, they're the right staff. Okay, there's no question in my mind. The kids love them, the parents love them in both programs, and they get it, okay? You're never gonna see them yelling at a kid because their hat is on. You know, it, they're, it's just, they're, and that was a, you know what I'm saying, okay? So the programs are good, that there's no one saying they're not, right? Um, okay, even without this question, last October, I had met with the architect on this building um, and if you could close that. So before the Anderson Center was even on my radar, as far as it might have issues, 
uh, close, just close that tab. I, oh no, I don't know. Oh yeah, um, go to the color-coded occupancy map. All right. So this is the map of River Bluff as it currently sits. Um, and, oh, <laughs> yes, don't watch. Something that's really important to understand, and a lot of people may not know this, this building is set by state regulation in a lot of rooms. Okay, so that that little tiny writing down there that's what explains <laughs> this. I'm sorry, you'll never be able to see that. But these rooms that are in blue can only have eight students. Max out. State regulation says eight students, and they must have one teacher and one para. If I don't have the para, then I have to can't have the eight students. Okay, so a lot of people don't realize that we're not fitting, we're never gonna fit the same number of kids in you'd fit in a regular school building, okay? These yellow rooms, um, no, these are lost. Where's, yes. the color's a little off, where's up there? Oh, these two, these two rooms. These colors and these colors are different. I don't know why they look the same up here. These two have six students, one teacher and two pairs. That's a state law. So you can see how, if you just hear, there's X number of kids and, I had to look this up today. There are currently 116 kids in the building. Okay. <laughs> um, but when you divide an eight, 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 six, six, um, these two programs. So again, these are the ALC classrooms over here. And our state application says 15, no, 12, 12 or 15. You get what I'm saying. So that's really important for you to understand. Um, Cindy, pull up one more map, then I'm going to stop. I'm going to wait to see if you have any questions. And I just want you to take this home and digest some of it. And we need to have a workshop. But can go to the concept draft. <clears throat> so back in October, Mark Lentz, who was the architect on this building, stopped me and said, hey, how's it going? And I said, well, we're eight years in. We've run out of space. Okay, so this was way before we started talking about the tower view piece. So we might have, whatever we do with the tower view program, this is probably still something on your radar. I'm just, okay. So everything in blue is something that we have now re, re, remake, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I couldn't come up with it. Um, so this used to be a conference room, it's now offices. This was a conference room, it's now offices. This um, was um, a United Way room where we did community service. We had to turn it into a classroom. Um, this is was our file storage. We had to draw our files out and now it's offices. Um, this, there's a stairwell up here to the second level. We're using that for storage now, our file after file storage. Um, you know, so uh, you can just see we, this was for our um, industrial tech, it was, We've made it into the SRO's office. I mean, we're, I have four people that don't even have an office space right now. Um, someone's out of their office, they just use that. And that's okay, we can do that. We started the itinerant room with 20 staff. We now have 28 in there. So we've, when we first designed this back in 2014, they said, well, build it for at least five years. Okay, guess what? We did a good job on that, but you can't anticipate the need. Um, so there's, we can do nothing. I'm just sharing what this all is. Okay, so one more thing in your packet, just as information. So that um, we did have, so Kraut Sanderson has been helping us pull numbers together. Because let's say we can't use the Anderson Center next year, because there's kind of, there might be a next year thing we need to do, and there might be a post next year thing we're doing, okay? If we brought portables in, I knew someone was going to say portables. That's going to be 1.3 million. I couldn't believe it. They have to put footings in. Okay, so Krauss Anderson's been working because I knew you'd ask me some questions. So I've been doing a lot of homework to see what options are. There is the Jefferson School that's open at least one year. Okay, everyone can't really promise it's going to be open beyond that because they're out of space at Cobb. Okay, so it's one year. Um, that's going to be about 90000 to lease that. That's a guess on my part based on what we were paying when we ended. Yep. Um, 
there might be a pod at Red Wing High School that we could use for a year or forever. You know, so there's lots of options. And I've tried to explore every single option that people have brought to me so that I can provide all of the information to this group and the superintendents. Um, the estimate on this cost um, was just under seven million. So you have lots of runs in there. Um, and I'm this, sorry, Jerry. And that um, you this. said uh, okay. oh, so. So if they were going to build, it would be four classrooms so that we could keep the ALC program separate from the other program. Because there's different, let's, well, Goodhue. Goodhue has a K-12 building. There are different rules for K-1-2 than there are for the high schoolers, okay? Just like in this building, there's, there's different expectations, okay? Some of our kids can't have their cell phone. That's not an issue for our ALC student. You know, I mean, so and you have to be able to be flexible enough to make that work. It helps if you can have a section, okay? So four classrooms, problems with classrooms since 2014 is now for every four classrooms, you have to have a storm shelter and bathrooms. Okay, so the other four spaces you see here are lab spaces. But guess what? The labs, you don't have to have storm shelter bathrooms. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to figure out the most cost-effective way to do this and in a way that would honor programs. I'm just bringing options to you. Okay, that's also my job. So on this, you'll see the ALC classrooms with storm shelter, labs, current reassigned. Now, this is also taking into account the impact program. Um, Trying to get that moved here. Yes, because my districts are already transporting here. So, and I get, but it's it's got to be a 15 minute drive from here to merchants. Well, yeah. probably not for me. Yeah. But maybe That's for someone else. Right. I tend to drive a little fast. Um, okay, so my, it's, it's all kinds of things. There is. All right, that was a lot. The superintendents have been in these conversations. You need time to talk with them. And then I really recommend that we have a workshop because I've given you about the 60,000 foot view of everything, but you're going to have questions and I need, to, I need to figure out, I need to make sure I have a place for my students next year, um, whatever that is. Yes, Bob? It's a lot and my head has been spinning because there's just, yeah. You spoke of Anderson um, uh, wanting to do fundraising mm -hmm. and then build addition, remodel or whatever, yep. and the, the HVAC mm -hmm. issues. Is that, could that be done by fall? The, um, the Anderson Center believes that the HVAC and security could be done by fall. Mm -hmm. They're not sure they wanna go forward with that if Red Wing hasn't signed a long-term lease first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a ch chicken and then I got to wait for some decisions and, right. um, but and I can't wait too long. If we, if we, Red Wing is still mm -hmm. on the hook for the lease. Through 2028. Through 2028. So, and here's the kicker. If, so right now it's under a lease levy, but if an educate if an educational program isn't there, it's got to come out of their general fund. Right, which is not good. Well, <laughs> if a program isn't, yeah, it could be. It, it, there has to be something there. It can't be vacant. It could be district space. It could be office. Oh, it could be community yet. It could be something oh. we we could lease levy for it because there's two different. So there's lease a way to get around that to at least district get in lease space, levy. district administrative space, and educational space. We can't leave levy for empty space. <laughs> okay, so there might be a way if that was the issue to keep that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we house the programs out there, we will not realize the 250,000, the quarter million savings. But that might be a choice our districts make. So you would think if this Anderson Center is worried about losing their lease, don't they be like, yeah, we're going to jump and get all this stuff I think done instead more, of oh, waiting? Oh, they're, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, Jason, well, I don't think that they're, they just want the long-term lease. Wait, and they're ready to go. They've got to know that we'll stay there. Yeah, but them, 
for you guys to decide that you're going to stay there once they be jumping at the fact that we're going to do security now to show that we're doing something, not waiting for a Red Wing to vote on what well, or not. Well, because they think, still got five years on the lease. Right. The problem, I think, is that if, if they're going to, um, what they want to do is build an actual space. And so they'd be creating a security system for four years. And is that really a good idea? No. I mean, I mean you twenty thousand dollars. You got to secure the kids. I mean, that's what right. We're all no, doing. I understand that, but um, you know, I I don't think that just yeah, I it's it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. So I think, like I said, having a workshop and bringing everyone together. Um, I think is our next move. I would really like to have a workshop, a scheduled workshop the first week of April if possible. I don't know what your schedules are like. Have the superintendents join in because we can also then go through all the costing models and see, and then I'll follow the direction. Um, um, if you decide, so um, Jerry, I'm sorry. Um, but in the Baker Tilling models, you'll see, like for that seven million, <clears throat> let's say it was let's say it was seven point two. These are just examples. Two hundred thousand dollar home in Red Wing is nine dollars a year on the tax loan, but in Goodhue, it's forty nine dollars a year. So. I mean, there's an impact. So why is that? Yeah, because of their farm land. Different classification. <clears throat> different classification. Smaller population and yeah. but businesses. Right. What about but now? Isn't there something? It's not smaller population. It's the what is the classification? Yeah, it's the it's classification. classification oh, of land. The one acre. One acre, not the whole farm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is you that... have enough lease levy authority to do it. So right. districts will have to, I mean, there's a lot to consider. Um, uh, and in various years, um, Josh is right. In some years, the program, um, the Tower View program, in 2021, brought in revenues of 390,000, but the expense was 510. So, you what know, would happen, so they're not breaking even. Right. What would happen if Red Wing decided that we really value this program at our view? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to run our own you can run your own alp yeah at, um, only red wing students would be able to attend right um i gotta think about this there's something some other caveat and those students your other students would they have to do credit that. recovery through us okay. and target services through us right yes it had to be so you take on all the financial you keep the ALC high school yeah. would still be the here. ALP. But you would be that would the be the pathway would still be here. Yeah, pathways. Which would keep the program going. Yeah. Right. Continue right. So that our districts could still be targeted. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. You have staffing. And then the staffing. Mm -hmm. So and I, you know, we're in a, a year where a number of my districts are making budget reductions. And we don't know what the legislature is going to do. So there's there's all these moving pieces. And I didn't just, I mean, I called out Tower, uh, Tower View. So revenue of 390 and 2122, expenses of five, a little over 510. Pathways was also, Pathways had um, revenue of 140 and expenses of 320. So both of them have room where, where we need to look at the staffing and say, how can we still make this work and still have a place that our students are going to be successful? Right. Okay. Okay.
welcome the timeliness so compressed? Is it just the timing that Anderson reached out to Ridwing? I just how come the timeline is so compressed? So it, you know, obviously there was so yep, I discussion say... that was gonna happen a month ago, but typically these kinds of things would, you know, project a year out like here's because you know, it's some pretty big decisions for Red Wing. It came and... from the superintendent discussions. And they, when was the last time we met with them that they directed us to now take things to the board? Yeah, yeah so it's so like ago. last month and this month yeah, is when the I superintendents just... gave me the directive. You need to cut costs. Good. So I need to figure out how to do that. They didn't give me the directive last May. No. <laughs> Understand. That's, I'm sorry, when did you get the directive from the superintendent meeting? Uh, I'll look at it. I'm not going to give you, I just, I need yep. to know. Um, the 15th of March. 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 March 15th. Thank you. They have been examining the cost models up to that every, maybe from December on. No, yeah, we've been talking about the ALC programs for about three or four months. Right. But was, they were March more in the uh, bring us data kind of mode. <laughs> they haven't set their sights on a particular dollar amount. So yep. they just said be more efficient. Bring the cost down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and there's lots of options. That's, I think that's part of how, why this is so complex because there's just many different things that can happen that, you know, have us go one way or the other. Question. Um, so if we think about a, a workshop, what are we talking about during the work day in the evening? Um, and how do we make that? How do we? We would schedule a special schedule? board meeting. Special board meeting. Okay. okay. I was thinking evening, but I don't know what you, I don't know what's good for all of you. Well, and then we, we need our superintendents there. So I think it's to assume that they can make it is probably difficult, right? Without doing some sort of a, a poll of some kind, maybe. I think now you have enough background to, you know, either call me and have a conversation with me or work with your superintendent, um, so we can explain more. I know okay. that ours. I, we just. We did our agenda for our next meeting on March or April 3rd or whatever um, today because of spring break. And I know that in Red Wing on our agenda, um, talking about Tower View is going to happen that Monday. Just so we should have it after that because then we might have right. Ryan's decision. Right. The third. And I should yeah, choose the yes, third. April third. And I don't know when all of your I kind of interviews that with meetings. Okay. I believe I all set around interviews. Yeah. Then, or maybe maybe not. I I'm not sure yet. Maybe they pushed it out further. I don't what time are the interviews going on? Well, I you don't know. I don't second I'm talking second round, so I don't it know. Might be at night. So we so probably can come. So I don't oh, think we need. Tonight. Yeah. I don't think we need board action to schedule a special meeting. No. We just I need just, to schedule. I put it in there just in case you wanted right. to direct me to well, do something. Kind of. A, I think the action would be to hold a workshop. Right? And yeah, not and necessarily I schedule we, it. I don't just, think we need formal board action to make that happen. Is what I'm saying. I don't think there's any, unless somebody else disagrees. I mean. No, no, no. Well, I don't you know, know they, they can, it is an action item, though. I, I right. think we post a meeting with the intent that the board members and superintendents, based on scheduling, and then obviously we have whatever one week posting or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll post it tomorrow so that plenty of time. I probably won't have all that. But you would need a date for months. Yeah. April 5th, April 6th. Yeah, I think we need to honor. So Marilyn, do you want to? I don't. I don't think the interview. I've got. I've got other stuff going on. It's personal. That's not even. Uh, yeah. And I'm leaving town, and I'm. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. You could, I, and as for my superintendent, I can certainly not speak for him. So I don't know. At all. Do I, you I, want us to just put a doodle poll out? You might as. Well. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. we should. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I can't commit to anything. That's okay. Right now. Okay. 
Well, it's been intense. I don't think yeah. With all of the superintendent right. interviews and the right. whole process for the four districts that are going through that. Uh, well, right. just That's just intense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So I will make the motion since it's an action item to table that for the next meeting. Okay. So we have a motion to table this agenda item until our next meeting. Do you have a second? So I move my jury. Second. second by Therese. Any other discussion, questions? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Sherry, for all of that. On the new business, um, and we have one more non-renewal um, that was missed last month. So same situation. Um, so do we have a motion for the non-renewal? So move. Motion by Jerry. Second. Second by Jason. Um, questions? I'll, I'll, we'll do a roll call vote. So all those in favor, Jason? Yes. Jerry? Yes. I'm a yes. Bob? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. And Teresa. Yes. Motion carries. All right, we have the GCED staffing 2023-24 staffing plan. So this is the same um, template that I've used in previous years. You can see the current year staffing for licensed um Cindy's pulling up the current year and then um projected for 23-24. This does take into account the directive from um the districts um, to uh, try to, to make reductions. So you will see that there is a lower number of licensed staff on the bottom, but otherwise it stays pretty um, consistent to what it has been this year. Um, we might, if we don't, for instance, aren't able to hire music, um, we might look to fill that out with another elective so that we can, because we need the electives to fill for five RL um, for the credit pieces. So um, that might tweak a little bit. And if following our workshop, the superintendents direct me to go, or you all direct me to go a different direction. The board, after we've had that, we can always, I can always return to this. And, um, but otherwise this is what we're proposing. So you've got reach and step, and Cindy, if you go down just a little bit, no, the other way. Okay, you've got, this is 22, 23 licensed staff and the numbers of paraprofessional, and then 23, 24. Um, so I don't think there are any changes in our reach and step program. And you see the totals, yeah, they're identical. Then we've got the, um, the state approved alternative programs. That's where you see a reduction. And then the Five Rivers Online Learning. And I think that's the same as well. Again, electives might move back and forth depending on what we can hire. But thank you, Zabrota, for a great industrial tech teacher. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, do we have a motion to approve the staffing plan? So moved. Motion by Bob. I'll second. Second by Jerry. Any other discussion or questions for Jerry? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, we have no other. And uh, Sherry, do you have any board reports? Mm -hmm. um, I do not have any board reports. Um, okay, one minor one. There was a Supreme Court decision that had great impact on our districts that was made on Tuesday. Um, prior to Tuesday, a student with special needs had to exhaust all of their remedies under IDEA. Or they could do anything the Supreme Court has decided no, that they can file for a claim under ADA at the same time. Files for claims under ADA are financial claims. Um, so it was a Michigan case. Okay, so the, the, and I'll, I can, I'll send you some things on it. I believe this is what your intendants uh, uh, Americans with Disabilities, disabilities Act. Yes, mm -hmm. sorry. And then these were your certificates. You were not here for February, so I'm handing them out to you. <laughs> I get it. You guys, being on the board is a lot. It is. I mean, <laughs> how late were you in interviews last night? I mean, it yeah. it's it's a lot. So I really appreciate I really appreciate you coming and being a part of this. Well, I'm, when you're, you know, 
I, I didn't really, I mean, I knew we do a superintendent search. Oh, I knew oh, that's what I was stepping into. Did I hand it but I had no idea <laughs> of the hours and hours and hours of looking at residents, <laughs> reading letters of recommendation. <laughs> and then I grabbed them all the time. Yeah, it's, oh, there you go. It's, it's huge. She's got you. 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 She's Oh, all right. Um, our next meeting is April 27th. Um, I I will be out of town, um, so we can. Jerry is willing to chair the meeting. Do, would you envision we'll bring something back for this? I have no idea. Okay, but so. uh, your alternate would be there, and certainly yep. they would know what happened at the workshop. And okay, all right. We will stick with the uh, April 27th then, unless it's a conflict for anybody else. <clears throat> Yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. All right. So we have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Jason. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you.